Hey everybody. Today I want to spend a little time talking about Anscombe's Quartet. These are four data sets created by Francis Anscombe for a paper that went out in 1973 that um, really illustrate the dangers of relying on numerical summaries alone when looking at two variable data sets. And I think data sets more broadly than just two variable data sets. You can see the pictures here on the Wikipedia page. There's four of them. The first is a good candidate for linear regression with our usual assumptions. The second, in the second data set, X and Y have a very clear relationship, but it's not a linear one. In the third one, there's a very much linear relationship, but there's a single outlier. And in the fourth one, all of the X values are exactly the same except for one individual point um, that has a very different X value. So we have a high leverage point here. Um, obviously, regression here is, uh, is an odd thing to be doing. The point is that in each of these four different data sets, all of the summary statistics are the same. The means, the variances, the correlations, and the regression coefficients. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to go over to R and show some of that and do a little bit of work with the built-in Anscombe data set. But before I do that, let's just take a quick look at that original Anscombe paper. I'm obviously not going to go through the whole thing, but um, it is a delightful read, and I, I recommend it to you. In particular, I just want to point out this first couple of paragraphs. Most textbooks on statistical methods and most statistical computer programs pay little attention to graphs. Few of us escape being indoctrinated with these notions. Numerical calculations are exact, but graphs are rough. Um, for any particular kind of statistical data, there's just one set of calculations that constitutes a correct statistical analysis. In fact, statistical analysis and data analysis more broadly are as much arts as they are science. Finally, performing intricate, intricate calculations is virtuous, whereas actually looking at the data is cheating. I think this one is, uh, is particularly relevant in our current day and age. Um, it draws attention to the difference between data analysis for understanding and data analysis for prediction. And the latter is frequently done as a black box. And for the former, using any sort of black box is, uh, is, very, is much less likely to help you further your understanding. Okay, so let's go over to R and do a little bit of work here. The Anscombe Quartet is um, preloaded into R. So let's just take a look at that. As usual, I've loaded up tidyverse and set my theme to minimal. Here it is, in exactly the format that Anscombe originally published it. You see that we have, in this case, eight columns with 11 entries. So um, x1, x2, x3, x4 are the x values for the four different data sets, and y1, y2, y3, y4 are the y values for the different data sets. It immediately jump, jumps out at me that this data set is not tidy. The variables that are really occurring here are the set number, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the x value, and the y value. So early on, we're going to be kind of working around that fact and swimming up against the current. In a little while, I'm going to want to pivot this and do some more natural stuff using um, tidy syntax. To start, though, let's just get some summary statistics column-wise. There are lots of different ways that we can do column-wise um, operations in R. Again, let me stress, if I'm actually doing an analysis with this set, I'm going to start by pivoting it. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to do a little bit of work column-wise before I do that. Maybe let me put a hyphen in column-wise. I'm not sure if a hyphen belongs there or not. I'm going to put one in just because uh, then I don't have to look at the red underline from autocorrect. So there's many different ways of getting summary statistics by column here. For instance, let's just start by getting the means of each of these columns. I think the most direct is some sort of apply function. So um, we could do L apply. That would give us a list back. I don't usually use S apply, the sort of simplified apply version, but in this case, I think I will. This will give me a backup vector. I want Anscombe, and the operation I want to do is just the mean to start. And that's literally just giving me back a column mean for each of these eight columns. And you can see the column names are still there, x1, x2, x3, and so on. You see that all of the x values have a mean of 9. All of the y values have a mean of about 7.5. 
there's some very, very small um, deviation here, and we will see that in a couple of other, other summaries as well. We could do this for something like a standard deviation, for instance, and you can see that the x values have the same standard deviation and the y values have the same standard deviation as well. Let's do this one more way. Let's use uh, some tidyverse stuff. Let's use summarize. And obviously I'm summarizing in the ANSCOM data set. So with summarize, I'm getting um, uh, some summaries for individual values. And so what I want to do here is to um, work column wise. So it's across and I want to go across everything. It's a nice little helper verb. So now whatever I specify next is going to happen to every single column in this data set. So let's just do standard deviation. That's what I already did. And you can see um, that I got exactly the same values. So for instance, the column Y4 has a standard deviation of 2.03, just as we saw before. Let's get one plot here. Let's recreate a plot, I don't know, maybe for data set one. So obviously I'm gonna do a ggplot and I wanna use the ANSCOM data set. My X is going to be X1, and my Y is going to be Y1. And we'll do a geom point. And I think I also want to put a smoother on there. Let's do that. So um, I'll do a linear regression, and I'll leave out the standard error ribbon as usual. Okay, there we go. So if we look back at the uh, at this Wikipedia page, we've just recreated this first plot. And obviously we could go back and do that for x1, x2, y1, y2, I'm sorry, x, x2, y2, x3, y3, and x4, y4. And get four individual plots, and we could even um, paste those together with cowplot or something. Um, it's gonna be more work than we wanna do. It's gonna be awkward. This data set is not tidy. Really, our best approach is just to tidy it. Hey, by the way, how do I, how can I tell at a glance that this is not tidy? Well, remember your principles of tidy data. In a tidy data set, every column represents a variable and every row represents an observation. And it's the latter of those two that I think really makes it clear that this is not tidy data. What does row one represent? Well, it's really representing four different things the X and the Y values from the first set, the second set, the third set, and the fourth set. So um, let's take care of this. And this is not a simple pivoting challenge. I think um, as we look at this, we can see um, uh, uh, that the true variables that I mentioned a little bit ago, set, X, and Y, are contained in these column names in a rather complicated way. The um, X and Y variables are both the first character in each of these columns, but in fact, the first character in each of these columns is naming two different um, variables. So I'm going to need two columns in my tidy data set with the names X and Y, the first character of these different columns. On the other hand, the second character in these columns is referring to a, vari a variable value. So in that case, it's going to be the set number. The tidy data set I'm going to want is going to say set for the first column, and the set value will either be 1, 2, 3, or 4. The second column will be x. The third column will be y. OK, um, maybe I'll just call this one longer. And I want to do a pivot longer on this. And actually, you know what? I obviously should be using the pipe. Let's get that in here. Okay, so with pivot longer, and maybe I will just pull up the help file here on that. So we have to specify our data set. We already did that. We have to say what columns are of interest to us. And by of interest, I mean which columns have variable names in the column names. And in this case, it's everything. So here I am using that helper verb, everything again. 
Okay, now I have to specify where the names go and where the column and, and where the values go. So in this case, um, as I said a little bit ago, things are a bit more complicated. Everything's going to be values here, so it's just sorting out the names that we need to deal with. And the th if we go down to the names to thing here, we get in this um, sort of third bullet point, if length greater than one, multiple columns will be created. That's what I want. I want to create multiple columns from these names. In fact, a total of three of them. In order to do that, I'm going to have to specify either a names sep or a names pattern, looking at these column names and letting, know, letting R know how to break them down. In this case, I need to look at the first character and then the second character. So I actually find it easier to do the names pattern first. And um, the names pattern in this case is going to be one thing, one character, and then another character. I'm not going to go into that in depth. I need to do a whole video on regular expressions at some point. Before I do that, I need to understand regular expressions just a little bit better than I do now. Long story short, this is saying take the first character in those column names, then take the second character. Deal with them separately. All right, then names two. So I need to get two different things. And the first one is dealing with this X or Y. So this is going to make a different column depending on the value of that. And so the syntax for that is actually right here in the help file. It's quote dot value. Maybe I'll just copy and paste that. And then the second thing is just going to be a value itself in the column set. So we specify that. And that should do it. Let's see if we got it right. Okay, so we got exactly what we want. In the first column, we have the set, one, two, three, or four. In the second column, the x value in that set. And in the third column, the y value in that set. We can now get both plots and summary statistics extremely um, quickly. So let's do quick plots and summary stats. And uh, I wrote the word plot first, so let's actually do the plot first. So I'm using the longer data set, and I want my x to be x, and I want my y to be y. So put x on the x-axis, put y on the y-axis. Let's go ahead and give it some color as well. Color equals set. We'll do a geom point to get a scatter plot. We'll do a geom smooth as before. Uh, let's see here, let's facet this. Let's facet it um, by that set. So I get four separate plots, not all of them just on top of one another. And finally, let's make sure that this is colorblind friendly with scale color brewer palette equals quote dark two. Uh, what don't you like here? Okay, seems to be okay. All right, so let's zoom in on this and see how it looks. All right, so that's exactly what we are seeing from Wikipedia. We've got the four different data sets, one, two, three, and four. We've got the regression line, and you can see that the regression line is the same in each case, um, despite the fact that these data sets are radically different. Finally, let's actually get the summary statistics. In order to get the summary statistics, I want to do a group by and summarize. And this summarize is going to be a lot more direct um, than this summarize that I originally did, where I had to go across the variables and I had to do one operation at a time, first mean, then standard deviation, and so on. So um, let's take longer and we'll pipe it into a group by. We want to group by set, of course. And then we're going, to, we're going to do a summarize. Let's see here. Let's get the mean of the x values. Let's get the mean of the y values. Let's get the standard deviation of the x values. 
the standard deviation of the y values. And um, let's do something we did not do um, up here originally when we did our, um, our calculations for things like standard deviation and mean. Let's get a correlation. So in this case, it's the correlation of the x values and the y values grouped by the set. And I can just print that out. OK, so um, as promised, you can see that in each of these cases, the x values have the same mean, the y values have the same mean, same standard deviations, both for x and y. And in each cases, the sets have the same correlation up to a rounding error.